What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at this week's forecast, seeing what the stars have in store for us. So, let's get into it. As always, shout out to all the Libras celebrating birthdays this week, as well as the Scorpios, as we will have the sun transiting into the sign of Scorpio in the middle of the week, uh, Wednesday to be exact. And it's Scorpio season, a fixed sign, a water sign, the sign of transformation. And I remember in two separate polls and uh, groups that I'm a part of on uh, Facebook, uh, Scorpio was uh, crowned the most popular sign in the Zodiac. So, and, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty... I'm not shocked by that. I'm pretty much, you know, not shocked because Scorpio is a sign of mystery. Um, it's a magnetic sign ruled by Pluto. And yeah, you know, every everyone has an experience uh, with a Scorpio, just like they've had an experience with the Gemini, you know, and from their opinions form and all of that. So uh, what do you need to know about Scorpio season? Well, like I said, it's a water sign. It's a fixed sign. It's the eighth uh, sign of the zodiac, or correlates to the eighth house, and it's known as the sign of transformation, as well as the sign of sex. Okay, and the eighth house also relates to you know occult, all things occult or hidden. Okay, secrets, things taboo. So all of these things are going to be themes during Scorpio season, and it's my natal third house. And I, I really like Scorpio season. Um, Scorpio energy allows you to focus. Focus through, through intensity as well as focusing through emotion. Okay? And that emotion, most of the time, borderlines on aggression, but a subtle aggressiveness. Mars... Is the more outward, or I should say, Aries is the more outward, aggressive, aggressive side of Mars, where Scorpio uh, is the you know the internal one. So the re and just so everyone's clear, I I do observe Pluto as the ruler as well as Mars because just in in you know my studies and things, this is the the internal nature of Mars or the feminine nature of Mars, okay? Uh, so, like I said, it's it's emotion that can turn into productivity or energy or used to direct the will, okay? Um, so, I, my first suggestion for Scorp Scorpio season is to think about what do you want to transform within your life, okay? And whether or not, now how it normally goes is that something occurs, an event occurs to trigger the transformation. But in our journey of, of you know, self-awareness and self-understanding, we kind of want to be able to grab a hold of whatever is going on without something triggering it, you know? So basically what I'm saying to you is to find a chip. Find a chip buried within you. Something, you know, that you are dissatisfied with and shine a light on it. Okay? You can do this for yourself or the transits will do it for you. But I would really, this is a time to definitely go within. Especially at this particular time, we are in the waning phase of this cycle. So it is a time of reflection. But yeah, you definitely want to... So I've, I've found through the years that Scorpio energy is really best uh, used when channeling through conflict, you know, turning our conflicts in, into strength, okay? And this is where the Pluto side comes in, you know, um, burning something or, or destruction, you know, leading to a rebirth, okay? So the theme of death. So that's the next part. Ask yourself. What's going to die? What is going to die this season? What am I trying to kill within myself in order to give 
you know, uh, new life. All right. But, you know, we got a new moon in Scorpio coming in a couple weeks. So I'm going to come back to this topic and talk about it. But nonetheless, it'll be a really good time. So this week we have Mercury still in Scorpio shadow period right now. So as I'm always telling you guys, pay attention to the things that are occurring at this time. And then when Mercury is retrograding back over these degrees, uh, you know, you'll have a, a deeper perspective or other things will uh, come into play, right? So then we have Venus here as well. And this week, Venus is in really, really good standing. So Venus is going to be sextile Saturn as well as trying Neptune. So wherever this is within your chart, your Venus energy is going to be feeling much more imaginative. And this is actually, this is an actual very powerful aspect because with the trying to Neptune, it increases imagination, but at the same time, the sextile allows you to be able to see realistic ways of manifesting what it is uh, that you're imagining and, you know, creating a concrete plan for it okay so it's really strong here it's like you have the best of both worlds okay so definitely take some time to visualize be creative if you're if you're an artist this is like going to be a fun week you know um but i would say especially like for an artist or creative person um you may not want to focus so much on the creative side, but rather like on the more concrete, practical, you know, side. Promotion, you know, the business, building a foundation. How am I actually going to materialize or, you know, uh, benefit maybe, you know, monetarily from my particular endeavor? Okay, so that's my advice for artists and then for anybody who has like a business or anything like that if you were looking to uh, <clears throat> launch I've had people come in this past week asking me about that I never really am big on launching in this phase of the the moon cycle unless you have other clarifying aspects within your chart okay like maybe you know, one of these, uh, a particular energy in trying to like your Jupiter or, you know, mid heaven, some, something like that. But I can understand the motivation. But like I said, take time to channel the practical or material side of how you are going to capitalize and move and operate when it is that time. Okay. So, in this regard, it can be a real creatively and business wise, it can be a really, really good time. You know, investments and in things, you know, are also um, encouraged. OK, in terms of relationships, I always like when Venus gets with Saturn uh, because we, we see things for what it is. Now, like I said, Neptune, Saturn here involved on the romantic side. If you're meeting someone this week, like for the first time you attract them and things like that, this can indeed be a very significant person for you, okay? Now remember, don't always think in terms of just romance, but just in terms of it could be a mentor, it can be, you know, a, a friend, but this is once again like a soulmate kind of transit going on here meeting people or forming relationships that will have a profound impact on us going forward okay uh this can be an older person this can be someone culturally different than us or even someone who believes something differently than we do okay so just pay attention to who you attract into your 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 life this week and and why 
all right? Uh, but in a real, real romantic sense, it's a good time to just, you know, connect uh, with, with your partner. Uh, if you want to actually get into a relationship or take things to another level, this energy definitely supports that, okay? Um, then we got Mars going through Libra. Uh, shout out to everybody who uh, commented on the post that I made earlier uh, this week. Uh, and if you haven't, I just, if you didn't see it, I basically just wanted to know how everybody was doing with this Mars and Libra transit compared to Virgo. Because uh, I know for myself, it was a lot more just on top of myself. And, you know, my will was stronger. And this... Libra transit for me, Mars and Libra transit has definitely been one where I've just been enjoying myself a lot more, you know, indulging and in things like that. And a lot of other people out there are doing the same. So this week we got Mars now in the second decade, you know, of uh, Libra going to be squaring Saturn. And this is why it's really important to understand what phase of the moon we're in and you know when to do things and when not to do things so when mars comes in square with saturn we're much more aware of like damn I, I haven't been uh on top of myself i haven't been doing you know what i need to do right and it can inspire action like i need to take action but right now is not the time to necessarily do too much okay this is an aspect where by if you try to exert your will too much or 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 be too forceful or or are outgoing with it you're really gonna go nowhere okay so it's kind of like if you invest into something right now it may be you're you're probably investing out of um you know impatience and, and just the need to do something okay you you feel like you need to take action, but my suggestion is to to take subtle steps to because especially with uh, Mars being in the air sign, go within, mentally engage yourself, mentally get on point, uh, possibly become a little bit more organized, you know, within your thoughts and how you're gonna move, okay? But it isn't necessarily the time where we're like, I need to go out and conquer the world. Nope, take your time. This is the part of the phase uh, cycle where we see what has worked and what hasn't worked. All right. Uh, and then the next thing, you know, for others, especially if you're like uh, Mars ruled or, you know, Aries or something is in a prominent position in your chart. Wherever this is, you can be feeling a lot more pressure in that area or depressed or just feeling sorry for yourself. And... Like I said, you just want to overcome that with organization, tapping into Saturn. What do I need to do better and how can I do that better? And with it being here on Mars, you know, there's, there's help. Help comes from other sources, okay? So maybe you've been trying to do too much on your own and you need to admit the fact that I need a little bit of, of assistance here. Or maybe there's someone that you need to learn from within your life, okay? But like I said, don't try to do too much. All right, don't save your energy, okay? Uh, and then lastly, last thing I wanted to talk about is Jupiter. Jupiter in Sagittarius, it is now in the last uh, decade of its transit, okay? It's actually, it's going to be moving a little bit faster now, okay? Uh, and basically, if you don't know anything about decans, uh, I'll probably make a video on this soon. But um, each decade has a ruler. And this third decade of Sagittarius is ruled by the sun. So it corresponds to Leo. So wherever Leo is within your chart, this is where a lot of the wisdom or the lessons or, the, or where you can channel this Jupiter and Sagittarius energy towards. All right? So... Or where you'll be gaining that wisdom and learning from. So if it's in your 10th house, all right, you're going to have to use what you've learned in 
uh, with Jupiter and Sagittarius or understand what it's been trying to teach you and apply that towards your 10th house, your career, your public status. Uh, if it's in your 8th house, there's going to be, you know, a need to uh, use more discretion within, you know, your sexuality or, you know, it can be a time where uh, you're, you're learning more about the occult or you're seeing a bigger picture or expanding within that area. You know, if it's your 4th house, home is going to, you know, uh, be more of a concern, things like that. So pay attention to where Leo is within your chart, where Sagittarius is in your chart, what you've learned up until this point, and kind of how you're going to put it all together. And this is fire. So it's one of those things where it's like, wherever this, these areas are, you're going to want to take some real action within those areas okay like literally you're going to want to um make so if it's in your fourth house right maybe and you actually need to move okay you're you're just not happy where you are okay and if it's in your third house maybe you need to take a more active role in expressing or 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 learning you know particular things all right so this is my interpretation of this week. Uh, feel free to let me know what's going on in your world, how these transits are treating you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so. If you need a reading, holla at me. Till next time, peace.